Hello and welcome to the another episode of the DMG Tech Show. I'm your host, Jonathan Parkinson. In this episode, we're going to be talking about Simple Screen Recorder. Uh, why am I talking about Simple Screen Recorder? Uh, the reason being is I have upgraded to the 14.04, which a lot of users might, and that is the trusty version of Ubuntu. Uh, the problem is, is in a previous video, I recommend using Kazam when it comes to screen recorders. Uh, that is because it works really well on everything I believe before 13.04 and so this is going to be simple screen recorder uh, it's actually extremely easy to do uh, it's very customizable uh, you can get a lot of things going on it uh, so let's go ahead and get that started uh, first thing you're gonna need to do let's go ahead and open up our terminal and you're gonna type in three commands like we typically have to do to install almost any application Now it's going to look like this. I'll open one on top of another. Uh, you're going to pop this. You just come down to continue. Uh, you can come up here, create a profile so you can save all of what you're doing uh, for later on, which I recommend doing. Uh, what I have mine set up to is record the entire screen. I left all that the same. My frame rate's left at 30. Uh, 30 is really, really high. Uh, you don't really need it to be at 30. 25, 22, that can work for your simple stuff. If you're going to try to record any games, then yes, you want to kick that up to 30. Uh, if you want to record your cursor, record your audio. Now, if you're going to record your audio from a third-party uh, voice, I, or sorry, microphone, the way I am, I'm actually using a microphone that's plugged in via USB. Uh, you can leave it at Pulse Audio. You need to come down here and you need to hit CRAS, C-R-A-S. And that'll just to ensure that you have the other one taken care of. Otherwise, it's monitor of CRAS, which is going to be the monitor of your actual computer, or your Chromebook, should I say. Uh, you then go ahead and move on over. Uh, how you want to save it, where you want to download it. I have mine downloaded directly to my desktop, just really easy because I usually manipulate the file right away. And what you want to do as a container. I recommend the MP4. Uh, the reason why I uh, recommend that is it's easy to use on other applications. So when you go to edit your video, an MP4 is one of the most common uh, video formats out there. Uh, Kodak is going to be H.264. Uh, another reason why I use that is because that's the most friendly version for a or sorry for a YouTube if you plan on up loading anything to the web uh, videos you want to go ahead and leave it at a H264 you have your other options in here but again leave it like that constant rate factory you can leave that uh, preset whatever you want to do uh, if you find that it's maybe skipping a little bit you might want to play around with this uh, super fast has been fine for me allow frame skipping what this means is if your frames aren't matching up and instead of just lagging it'll just try to cut that frame out real quick uh, your codec, you want to be an MP3, just like it's an MP4 up here, an MP3 is the most common use for uh, manipulating your audio, uh, as well as using certain video players. I use the VLC video, uh, video player, so it's actually, I would leave that at the uh, MP3. Uh, we already have that set there, so I'm going to come in here and change that to just real quick so I can move to the next one next over to continue and we're gonna have the final uh, stage here now the cool thing about this is you actually can start a preview when I click that you're gonna see there's a little preview so when I move everything around you can kinda see that in the image it gives you a nice little thing of what's going on and that is going to be it now again if you do have any questions or comments you know where to leave them in the section below as always don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching